Hey everyone, I'm Sam. Uh, I run Grubdasaur Analytics. You might have seen a lot of my posts over on Reddit or Twitter. On Twitter, I'm Mass Grubdasaur. On Reddit, I'm Flame Serpent. And I make a lot of sort of visualizations of what uh, statistics I can find about Valorant. And one of the things I've been doing recently is I've been creating this playoff odds chances like table um, for the various leagues in the Valorant Champions Tour. And so I want to go through some of the frequently asked questions, as well as just a general explanation as to how exactly this model works. So here we have an example. Um, this is what it looks like for those of you who haven't seen it, but happen to be on this video. Um, the playoff chances in the America League updated as of May 11th. So at the time that you watch this video, I'm sure that'll be long out of date, but I'm sure the general principles of how the model works will still be roughly similar. So hopefully you can still take something helpful away from this. So here is again, we have all three leagues, uh, EMEA, Pacific, um, same idea, uh, same exact three things, playoff probability, team ELO rating, and a projected final record. And we'll talk a little bit about that last one uh, more as we move on. And so here are some frequently asked questions for the Grebnosaur Analytics playoff model, starting with what does the model do? What are you actually doing? Basically, we look at every game the team has played up to this point, and we calculate the total ELO from the past matches. You can look up, you can read about how ELO works, but essentially ELO is uh, designed to calculate a probability that one team beats another team. Um, from there, we simulate 100,000 outcomes for the rest of the season. So if there's, whatever, 15 games left in the season, we take the two ELOs of each game, we, combine, we com compare them, and then we calculate the chance that a certain team will beat the other team. Then we randomize a number, and we determine based on that number if Team 1 beat Team 2. And so the chance of each individual game going a certain way is equal to the probability ELO says of a particular team winning. We do that for every single game. Then we do a bunch of tiebreakers to see which teams actually make the playoffs. From there, we average the number of, per games, the number of games won per uh, world, as we call them, and the proportion of those worlds where an individual team makes the playoffs. That creates the projected uh, uh, playoff proportions, as you saw on the previous slide, as well as the projected final record, which is a rounded uh, estimate of how many games a team will win or lose over the rest of the season. Uh, so a question I've gotten asked several times is, do you weight more likely worlds more? Uh, do you care about what is more likely to occur? And the answer to that question is technically yes. The way I just described our process, maybe you can see why. Um, but you can see the same world multiple times. If the same simulation comes back and has the same teams winning, um, that's totally reasonable. Those are all included in our simulation. And so we see more likely worlds more often because the, each individual game is weighted based on the chance each team has of winning. And the biggest one that I've gotten pretty much every single time I post from pretty much everyone, and it's a very valid question, and it's who do you predict, predict X to lose to? Um, so whoever it may be, they'll ask, okay, Loud are projected, projected to go 8-1, and one, but right now they're 7-0. and oh. So which of the last two teams do you think they're going to lose to? And I want to go through some math, and I know it might seem to be a little bit scary, but it'll show you why it can both be true that the model thinks Loud will win both of their games and not think that, on average, they win both of their games. So let's go and break that down. We're going to look at this example again, May 11th, uh, playoff chances in the America League, where Loud and C9 both have playoffs locked up, um, but one of them is 7-0 and and the other one is 6-1. and so Loud, is, Loud has not lost yet. C9 has lost once. But if you look at their actual projections, uh, Loud is projected to go 8-1, and one, meaning they're projected to lose once. And C9 is projected to go 8-1, and one, meaning they're not projected to lose at all. Um, so because, if we go to the next slide, C9 and Loud both play Leviathan. And if you go back to that previous slide, you'll see that Leviathan is actually projected to win one game. It seems clear then that Loud is actually projected to lose against Leviathan. But, and these numbers are kind of just made up, but they might reflect what you actually believe about how the, the, the current Valorant scene is structured. 
every single game here, Loud and C9 are projected to win. So Loud has a 70% chance to beat NRG, a 70% chance to beat Loud. So does C9 over, or sorry, over Loud over Leviathan. So does C9 over Leviathan. Uh, but C9 over Crew has some bigger 90% chance because, I mean, Crew's 0-7 right now, so it's not unreasonable to think that Cloud9 could barely ever lose this match. And so some intuition we have is that game one win chance is equal to WC1, and game lose win chance, uh, or game lose chance is LC1, and game two win chance is WC2. So the probability a team has to win both games is the probability they win one multiplied by the probability they win the other. We're going to assume for the sake of this example that these probabilities are independent. They care about how good the team is, but if Loud loses one of the two games, it doesn't make them more likely to lose the second game. So the chance you win both is WC1 times WC2. The chance you win at least one is equal to one minus the chance you lose both. So if you one minus lost chance of game one times lost chance of game two, which is the odds that you lose both, you'll get the chance that you win at least one of those two games. And so if we apply that math, the numbers we saw on the previous slide, we'll see that Loud has a chance to win both games of 0.7 to the second, so 0.49. So that means that on average, Loud is projected to only win one game. If you flip a coin and it lands, like if you, they have a smaller than a coin flip chance of winning both of their two remaining games. And so what that means is that when we simulate 100,000 worlds, in 49,000 of them, they don't win, or they, they, uh, they win both games. But in every other world, on average, they don't win both games. And so that means when you round that final projected ranking, they're actually rounded down. They're rounded to 8-1 and one rather than 9-0. and oh. And so the opposite is true for C9. Because they're playing that crew game, which is a 90% chance, the chance they have to win both games is 0.7 times 0.9, which is 63%, which is greater than 50%. And so on the, in the long run, that'll average to greater than... Um, to, like it'll, it'll average up to, an, to a 9-0 and oh record. Or 8-1 and one in this case, because they've already lost a game. And Leviathan, on the other hand, has to play two really hard matchups against Loud and C9. And you can disagree with the underlying premise, but if you believe the chance they have to win each of those games is 0.3, then their chance to win at least one to beat Loud or C9 is 1 minus 0.7 to the second equals 0.51. And to be clear, that's not my model declaring uh, Leviathan to having beat or even being likely to beat Loud or C9. It's just that on average, they're going to win one of those games if you agree with the 0.7 probability, which again, very reasonable not to. I'm just giving the intuition behind this math. A, no a thing to note is that uh, the rounding will smooth this out over a longer season. So this is really noticeable because there's only two games left. And so Loud has this 49% chance just below the rounding error. It gets rounded down and it looks like they're going to lose more frequently than they actually will. But... When we add more games, it's not like every pair of two games Loud is projected to lose one. If we add another 70% uh, win chance game, then the probability that they win two of those is going to be pretty high. The probability that they win three out of four is pretty high. The probability that they win four out of five is pretty high. It's just that when we go down to these final two games, that rounding is rounding the maximum. This is the worst possible rounding for Loud in the model they could possibly have. But on average, the model does think they're more likely to go 8-1 and one than 9-0. and oh. And so we go back to the, th the, the thing and we can sort of get some intuition. Um, we see that Loud, again, have a... 8-1 uh, record. They have a slightly lower team ELO rating than Cloud9. It's calculated as a result of uh, map wins, and so Loud has just been a little bit less convincing in the games that they've won. And so they're going to have slightly lower percentage chances to beat the other teams that, um, that C9 would have. One thing if you want to ask yourself is who does the model think will win? Um, right now at least, I think I'm going to try to make this a little bit more robust in the future. But the way you can check that is just look at the two team ELO rankings. So Loud no, or Cloud9, Loud9, that's funny. Cloud9 is would be projected to beat Loud if they played. Uh, NRG would be projected to beat Furia if they played. Uh, Sentinels would be projected to beat MIBR if they played. All of these teams, if they have a higher ELO rating than the other team, have some percentage greater than 50% that the model expects them to beat a team with a lower ELO rating. Um, 
So hopefully that gave some intuition as to sort of how this model works, uh, why you see the things that you do, um, and answer some of the underlying questions you may have had about the methodology. Like I said, more work is going to go on. Uh, version 2, I hope, will include individual players. Uh, so as rosters change, as teams mix it up, uh, I'm hoping that we'll be able to sort of keep a pretty, effect or pretty effective uh, team ranking score. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this answered some of your questions. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you want to see more uh, videos like this or, or follow me on Twitter if you want to get more up-to-date uh, playoff odds type information. So thanks again. Have a good day.